Welcome to an overview of the Practical Reliability Engineering course from M2K. My name is Kenneth Lees and I look forward to being your course instructor. What you're about to see is a taster of some of the topics that I will be covering. This training course will be an interactive, enjoyable and interesting learning experience. The course is structured to give you an introduction to the key reliability engineering processes with a thorough grounding in the main elements. Thereafter, it offers practical advice and detailed guidance on how they can be applied to improve the performance of your plant or facility. Examples and group exercises allow delegates to acquire a more detailed and practical understanding. So, about the course. These are the imperatives. Firstly, the reliability of a plant or facility or how long a period it runs before an unplanned stoppage determines its performance. By that, I mean process safety, environmental and cost performance all depend on it. It is thus a pivotal driver, which we can use to make significant business gains. Unfortunately, it's often seen as a black art, best left to mathematicians or other specialists. For instance, many people do not appreciate the difference between reliability, where the primary focus is integrity and availability, which is how plants make money. The link between maintenance and reliability will also be covered in detail and how we can develop a maintenance program that focuses effort on failures with the highest consequence. Our principal goal should always be a safe and profitable plant. Stable operations brought about by high reliability are key. Upon completion of the course, you will understand and be able to apply reliability engineering concepts and many important topics such as the physics and statistics of failures. If we can better understand how and when equipment may fail, then we can put mitigation measures in place that will reduce or eliminate the consequence of the failure. In addition, the course will cover terminology and definitions in depth and put heavy focus on the important but often missed element that is human reliability. OK, let me warn you in advance, there's an acronym of FEST approaching. There are a number of tools that are used to improve reliability, and the course will explain the application of, among others, Pareto analysis, which is the 80-20 rule, eliminating bad actors, reliability block diagrams and their application, reliability, availability and maintainability modelling, fault tree and event tree analysis, failure modes, effects and criticality analysis, reliability-centred maintenance, risk-based inspection, root cause analysis and safety instrumented systems. These are both proactive and reactive tools used to improve facility reliability. Knowing and understanding the tools is important. However, the implementation of a reliability program and managing the change is vital. A golfer would not stop halfway through his swing. And this is exactly the same with a reliability project. Reliability projects result in changes affecting equipment, people and processes. Affected people did not ask for changes, and the natural reaction is to resist the change. To win, you have to get them on your side. How will you achieve that? I will explain during the course. OK, this is me, Kenneth, my business profile and a sample of achievements to date. There's my email address, so should you wish to send an email to me at any time, I'd be happy to reply. I've also added my LinkedIn handle should you wish to see more. My experiences primarily being with the energy sector and mainly with Shell International, both as a contractor and staff. I now run my own consultancy company, M2K, offering reliability and maintenance improvement services and conducting asset management training courses worldwide. Well, I did before the COVID epidemic. I have conducted many of these reliable engineering and maintenance management courses all over, including Europe, USA, the Far East and the Middle East, and have written and presented many papers in my field. Question, what is reliability? The formal definition is the probability that a component device or system will perform its duty without failure for a given time while working in a stated environment. In other words, we want our equipment to do what it's supposed to do for however long we want it to do it. During the course, I will talk a lot about probability and how to evaluate the chance or likelihood of an event occurring. More simply, what we're really talking about is fewer unplanned events or fewer failures. And the mantra of any facility should be to have fewer failures. Because if we have fewer failures, then our levels of reactive or unplanned maintenance will be much less. And these types of maintenance are much more expensive and much more time consuming. 
I will show you how top performers have only 10% reactive maintenance, while the worst performers have up to 80% of reactive maintenance. This is very important. Studies have shown that for roughly every 10% increase in reactive maintenance, this results in a reduction of 2-3% to of uptime. An easy way to determine reliability is by looking at the mean time between failures or mean time between work orders at your plant or facility. Both measures give essentially the same answer. MTBF is just the cumulative operating time divided by the cumulative number of failures. It's a useful measure to give us an idea of the scale, and normally the longer the MTBF, the better. However, it is only an average and does not tell us about the distribution of failures. For example, if we had a fleet of 10 pumps and monitored their performance over a period of one year and had 10 failures over the fleet, the MTBF would be 8760 hours. But it could be, on closer examination, most failures happen at the start of the monitoring period. They are early life or burn-in failures. Or perhaps the failures mostly occur at the end of the monitoring period due to wear out. Or they could be completely random. In the first and third situations, a planned maintenance program would not be appropriate. Whereas for the second, a form of PM at an interval just before the onset of the increased rate of failure would be applicable. The course will cover a number of different failure distributions and why these matter. These are the benefits of a reliable facility. As I said earlier, high reliability means high technical integrity. Any trip or process upset creates potential hazards. Reliable plants experience fewer trips or breakdowns, so integrity remains high. Fewer unplanned events will also improve plant uptime and availability is where you make the money. This is a knock-on effect in terms of reduced costs, increased efficiencies and better workforce morale. The flip side of that coin are the unreliability costs. Clearly, the lower our reliability, the more reactive we'll be. The amount of unplanned work will be higher, it will cost more and take longer to complete. All this will adversely affect HSE and production performance, lower morale and consequently reduce profit. The term HRO and this slide shows what it takes to become a high reliability organisation. And I'll cover the elements during the course. As you can see from the subheading, high reliability is really brought about by changing the culture of an organisation. High reliability organisations do not tolerate failures. They are an affront to their profession. High reliability organisations also elevate or link reliability safety. For those who can remember, as late as 30 years ago, it was widely accepted that accidents will happen. Now we know that accidents can be avoided. So how did this change come about? Well, there were several high-profile disasters, for instance, the Piper Alpha disaster, Bhopal and others. Industry saw that society considered these disasters to be unacceptable and brought an extremely high cost to the companies involved, and in fact often resulted in the removal of their license to operate. This increased awareness within industry and increased focus from society meant that rapid endorsement and support from top management for safety improvements took place. An HSE advisor role was created and given a high profile so that any event that impacted safety was investigated without delay. So why don't we repeat the safety story for reliability since an unreliable plant is by definition a more hazardous plant. In other words, get top management's attention and raise the profile of reliability. If we have a safety incident, or a near miss, or worse, a lost time injury, then an immediate investigation will take place to make sure we understand why it happened and the st and steps put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. We don't want our people to get hurt or worse. So my contention is that it should be the same with reliability. Remember, reliable plants experience fewer trips, so they have fewer hazards, and again, by definition, are safer. In addition, they are a more profitable plant, and that's what keeps the lights on. M2K, in conjunction with EML, have developed the Reliability Improvement Process, which we shortened to the acronym TRIP. Well, it wouldn't be a proper training course if we didn't include an acronym or two, would it? And I'll be looking at these important elements in depth. TRIP's a business process, and all these factors have to be in place normally in this order to get the reliability benefits I illustrated earlier. Like any business process, it requires structure, role definitions, performance monitoring and control, and should be used continuously. In other words, it should become part of the culture. 
So firstly, ask yourself this important question. Does your asset register accurately show what is at site? I've been on some site audits that showed a 30 to 40% mismatch between the asset register and reality. An up-to-date asset register is essential for planning and organizing effective maintenance, and you must get this sorted first. Getting the basics right is probably the single most effective way to improve plant reliability. Is your equipment clean and dry? Lubricated with the correct grades and quantity of oil? Are all bolts in place and tight? Is all small bore piping adequately supported and vibration free? Are all equipments and piping properly aligned? I will cover these and many more of what I term basics, since these probably account for about 40 to 50% of all reliability problems. Failure Elimination and Threats Program. I'll be talking more about failure intolerance and the rigorous problem solving method I mentioned earlier. Work planning, scheduling and execution. Are we wasting the time of our people from delays, waiting for this and that? Facilities can get double the tool time with an effective planning and scheduling process. This is the equivalent of getting 30 to 40% more manpower for free. Compliance can be defined as the number of scheduled jobs completed divided by the number of scheduled each week, month or any other stated period and is another important measure. I'll be demonstrating the clear link between compliance and availability. Finally, condition-based maintenance is about catching the failures before they happen and I'll cover the main CBM applications. Reliability is complex and there are many interacting elements. Reliability in design can significantly reduce costs when designing a facility and accurately predict the system availability. Operations also have a big impact on reliability. For instance, running equipment beyond their design limits will dramatically reduce long run lengths. I mentioned how maintenance and reliability are intrinsically linked. If you can do the right maintenance at the right time to the right quality, this has a huge impact on the performance of our equipment and in turn, a positive knock-on effect on system reliability. A strong defect elimination program is crucial to prevent repeat failures. Changes are inevitable throughout the life of a facility and a robust management of change procedure is essential to prevent potentially major unforeseen events. You may recognize this illustration as a form of hardware barrier analysis or Swiss cheese model and this shows how it applies to reliability. This cumulative risk visualization model is a particularly good way to demonstrate to management how the risk of having a major failure is increasing as we pass through each barrier. The further we get through all these barriers, the severity and consequence of a potential failure also increases. If all the holes align, it could mean disaster. I do not use that term lightly. How many of these apply to your facility? Reliability and availability are intrinsically linked. Arithmetically, reliability is the total time minus the unplanned downtime divided by the total time, whereas availability is the total time minus the unplanned plus the planned downtime divided by the total time. As I said earlier, availability is what keeps the lights on, and I'll be talking about the factors that influence availability throughout the course. The course will demonstrate the business imperatives for reliability engineering impart a broad understanding of the physics and statistics of failure and give a solid overview of the tools used and where they are applicable, human factors and how they significantly influence reliability. The implementation of a reliability program will be covered in detail since no amount of analysis will improve your plan, how to justify your selection and manage the change. Wouldn't it be nice if we could predict the future performance of a facility with our own crystal ball? And for that, we need to understand reliability concepts, but we have to take action and make a start. This practical training course will show you that reliability engineering is easy to understand and explains how to use data from operating and maintenance records to get safe and profitable operations. It will also demonstrate how the application of practical reliability techniques can be used to improve equipment run lengths and to make significant business gains. So, what are you waiting for? Come and join me.